So wine is the reason we are speaking English. Alcohol comes from the Arabic word for kajal and beer. Beer made it safe to drink water. All that and much, much more in this hair book. So there's no way that we could summarize this amazing book in a few minutes, but we sure as hell are gonna try. Welcome to Crush and let's get into it. Do this, go to your kitchen and open your fridge. Everything drinkable in there tells a story that's absolutely wild. We're gonna go through empires, wars, colonialism, the 2008 financial crisis. Man, what does all of this stuff have to do with all that? Strap in folks, we're starting at the beginning. Before refrigerators existed, storing stuff was hard. People sometimes used the cleaned out stomachs of animals to store fruits and grains. Leaving these in for a while fermented these fruits and grains into a weird, smelly, fizzy stomach juice. Yuck! And obviously, people drank it. And once they did, they felt dizzy. But not like, oh, what did I just put in my stomach dizzy? It was more like, ah, I feel kind of good dizzy. And they liked it so much that they just started making a steady supply of it. There's no way to know for sure, but a lot of people say that the desire to make beer regularly forced people to plant crops in one place and settle down. Agriculture, human society, cities, civilization itself. <sighs> Civilized behavior. Not exactly what comes to mind when you're thinking of beer. But it gave people a reason to come closer. And it made water safer to drink. We did figure out later that boiling water was an important step in making good beer. Which meant beer was often less contaminated than drinking water. So it's a few thousand years later and humanity has come a long way. And among other things, we've started making pottery. Anyone that has had water from a mudka knows that pottery is just old school refrigeration. It keeps things cool and prevents them from spoiling, at least for a little while. Things often did spoil when left in for too long and that's exactly what started happening with grapes. And folks, that's how wine was discovered. It took a special type of pottery, a suitable climate and grapes don't exactly grow everywhere. But most importantly, it took time. Wine took weeks or years to ferment, but wine also took a very long time to spoil. I guess that's why the grapes in my fridge have been there for two years. So because of this, the countries that could make good wine sold it for big bucks across all the continents. Except Antarctica. So wine was now seen as this new fancy drink meant for the rich. But just like your mom at the local market, people love to negotiate when they buy stuff. And you cannot do that without knowing a common language, right? So suddenly the people selling wine also started spreading their language, their culture, their ideas. The country that sold the best wine also ended up spreading their very system of writing that eventually became English. Now the Arabs were on a spree of burning stuff and seeing what happened. Hey, don't judge, we've all been there. They were perfecting the process of distillation and separating things on a chemical level. They found a bunch of stuff this way, like how residue from an ore turned into a dark powder. They used to call it alcohol. Today we call it kajal. They eventually used the same process on drinks like wine and beer, trying to find the essential intoxicating spirit of these drinks. That's why hard liquor is widely known as spirits today. And this essential intoxicating spirit was actually named after the process they used, alcohol. So alcohol turned out to have medicinal properties and started getting used as a disinfectant to treat open wounds, which is still done today. And trade? Trading these spirits was huge. I mean, you only needed a few shots to get drunk. A single bottle could replace a whole barrel of beer. So ships full of spirits were a lot more valuable than ships with beer or wine. Jack Sparrow probably didn't love rum. He loved the cold hard cash it made him. It got so insane that at some point, rum was used by the British colonies in the Americas as currency to trade slaves from Africa. This is starting to get depressing. Ashu, how much do you think a Tesla is worth in rum barrels? I think you would only settle for whiskey. 
So we didn't want this video to be too long, so we're gonna call this the end of part one. So the next three drinks may not be as fun at parties, but damn do they tell a weird story. Make sure you crush that notification bell because you're not gonna wanna miss part two. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing. And here are some more videos that you might enjoy. Stay tuned for more from Crushed.